Uh, I thought we'd start off the show with, we talked about this before, Aaron Rodgers, uh, he's taking time away from the Packers to think about his future, whether he wants to stay in the NFL, leave the NFL, uh, potentially move on from the Packers and go to a different team. And the one team that we talked about, I believe maybe this past week, was uh, the Jets have moved into the favorites outside of, obviously, the Green Bay Packers and returning to the Packers. The Jets being the favorites uh, if he leaves the Packers and he gets traded away. And that was in large part due to the fact that Nathaniel Hackett, former offensive coordinator of the Green Bay Packers and who was the former head coach of the Denver Broncos this past season, didn't even finish out the year. He was signed by the Jets as the OC. They got rid of Mr. LaFleur, who I believe, I think LaFleur actually got a job recently. I'm not too sure off the top of my head, but I forget what team uh, he got signed to. However, we talked about how, you know, what team would fit Aaron Rodgers the best and, and what is the best fit for one Aaron Rodgers and I felt like it was the Green Bay Packers just because you know he's held that team you know hostage for now we're talking about two three years at this point now uh, so why not hold him again for another year you already signed a three year 150 million dollar extension why not stay uh, for longer you know uh, so but you know, the, the the Jets is an interesting uh, proposition because the, the, the Denver Broncos made the same type of move uh, signing Nathaniel Hackett as their head coach in, in terms of simply hoping that Aaron Rodgers is like, oh, you know, Green Bay, they have no talent around me. At least the Denver Broncos have some talent. Let me move on there, you know. Uh, my former OC that I seem to have liked and had a good relationship with, he's the head coach of the Broncos. Let me move over there. And it just didn't turn out to be the case. You know, Nathaniel Hackett, I guess... My guess would be sort of told the ownership of the Denver Broncos, hey, I could bring over Aaron Rodgers, and uh, yeah, he'll, he'll be our starting quarterback. That fell through, and they ended up with Russell Wilson, who looked he looked very, very washed this season. It's just, I mean, he also got sacked, I believe, the most uh, in not NFL history, but the most this season. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how that turns out this season if we see Russell Wilson rebound, although I've said constantly on this show how I feel like that's not a blip. It's more so going to be a trend uh, for Russell Wilson heading uh, forward. So I want to talk about this Jets situation because I think it is very, very interesting because, once again, uh, Aaron Rodgers has a huge, huge contract that the, the Packers or his next team has to deal with. He signed a three-year, $150 million extension uh, with the Green Bay Packers, which is a huge cap hit. Uh, instead of building talent around him, he sort of stripped the potential uh, wealth from the Packers that they, that they could have spread amongst getting playmakers. But instead, they're left with Alan Lazard, who already basically hinted that this is his last year with the Green Bay Packers. They had to draft a couple wide receivers that Aaron Rodgers didn't even want to uh, uh, gain rapport with in the offseason. So they had to do it in the middle of the season, and we saw how that worked. Christian Watson very, very early on in the year with a drop, and Aaron Rodgers didn't trust him until about week 11, week 12, and that's when we saw it. He took off. Uh, Romeo Dobbs, it's been the same thing there. It just never really got any rapport with. Uh, he was asked, you know, if he ever went to a dinner with Aaron Rodgers uh, outside of, you know, playing the game with him, and, and Romeo Dobbs said, no, you know, I never got invited to a dinner with Rodgers or hung out with him outside of the facility, which is which is not surprising. It's very interesting how Aaron Rodgers does that. He, he keeps a very, very small circle, uh, but outside of that, he sort of shuns everyone away and doesn't want to gain rapport with them. And that's one of the reasons why I think the Jets is not a great opportunity because they have a lot of young talent. You know, you have a Brees Hall, you have an Elijah Moore, you have a Garrett Wilson, these young players who need to develop and, you know, you have a great, you have the potential of having a phenomenal quarterback. If Aaron Rodgers goes to the Jets, they may be in Super Bowl contention there. I, I believe they're definitely in playoff contention. It's just a matter of fact, you know, Will they be in the Super Bowl conversation? Usually Aaron Rodgers, surrounded by talent, is in the Super Bowl conversation just because he is a three-time MVP. He was just back-to-back -back MVP, although he didn't play like it uh, this season. So it, it, it's interesting. So uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to be owed $60 million fully guaranteed dollars uh, in the next two years, which is interesting. Uh, this season, he would be, I believe it's a $15 million cap hit uh, for 2023. Uh, and also, I believe it is going to be, let's say, uh, $150 million uh, contract extension last year has a fully guaranteed $60 million salary that must be paid off by any team he plays for in 2023. So um, March 15th is the, the option 
that could be exercised at any time between March 15th and the start of the regular season. Um, so it would be interesting what the Packers decide here, but it's $15.8 million cap hit for 2023 and then $32.5 million in 2024 for the Jets if they decide to trade and get Aaron Rodgers. And not only would it be you know just trading for Aaron Rodgers, but it would be one or two first-round picks. Uh, it could be even a player or two, maybe send Zach Wilson over to the Packers. Although I think it'll be smart for the Packers to go with Jordan Love, and we'll see what they do uh, this season and moving forward because they have to they have to figure out what they're going to do with Jordan Love, pay him, uh, release him, get rid of him, something. Uh, but it's I mean w- w- the when when he when he first played against the the Chiefs a couple seasons ago, uh, he didn't look great, but I believe he still threw for over 300 yards, which is still impressive. Uh, you know your first start against the Chiefs, who are, were a very formidable team. Uh, you know, he three, four, throw for 300 yards, uh, and you kept that game extremely close. Just think about it. If Jordan Love beat Patrick Mahomes. I think the Packers may have moved off Aaron Rodgers this season because I think you said, oh, that's a great achievement. You were able to go toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes. Um, although, you know, this season he came in, uh, I think they were down by a lot. Again, I'm, I'm forgetting which team, but he came into the came into the season, and I think he threw a couple touchdowns there, and he actually looked really, really good. And, and the reports coming out of, you know, training camp and out of practice were... He looks much better than he did when he first came into the league. So my guess would be, you know, they're going to go with Jordan Love, and it's going to be very interesting of a situation on how they're going to move forward because the Jets are a very, very good option. But I just think, you know, you're going to need a quarterback that uh, that is there for the players. And Aaron Rodgers just hasn't been that way, really, when he was with the Packers. And he begs, he, he begs the Packers' ownership and, and the front office to be like, please get me some talent. And they drafted a six foot five guy who runs four three, and, and it, it took you until week eleven to tw- uh, week eleven or twelve to really click with him, because you you decided you know let me just you know let me just go on ayahuasca trips and you know let me do all these things in the off season and not focus on football to find yourself, uh, which I mean. Yeah, you you could find yourself. It's just that you have responsibilities, and that's with your team that you've been uh, holding hostage for the past three years. So we're gonna see what Aaron Rodgers does. I I I still think that a the Green Bay Packers are the best option because you still have a decent amount of talent. The Packers still have a, a pretty good defense. At one point, they were ranked number one in passing defense this past season about midway through the year. Uh, you have two very, very good running backs. Let's not forget that. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon were essentially how you won. You, you went on, like, I believe, that four-game winning streak. It was your running game and your defense that was that was the main responsibility, the main cause of the, that four-game winning streak. It wasn't Aaron Rodgers throwing the football. It was the running game. I, I brought up a stat uh, on the show when we talked about it uh, right before the, the, the Lions game uh, at the very, very end of the regular season, which was... It was the running game and defense that was really the cause of the four-game winning streak. It wasn't Aaron Rodgers, you know, uh, having a glimpse of that back-to-back MVP season. So it's it's just quite interesting how Aaron Rodgers is going to go throughout uh, go go through this. But the Jets do have some options. You have Jimmy G, who was caught smiling on the sidelines uh, at the beginning of the third quarter when the 49ers were down, I believe, 21 to seven at the time. Uh, you also have Derek Carr who for some reason the the Raiders have not granted him the right to look for a potential trade suitor, which is a little bit interesting how, you know, you're going to need to pay him sooner rather than later, um, or you have to get rid of him. You know, you have to pay him his guaranteed money, which is $40 million by, I believe, February 15th, or you got to get rid of him. So the fact that you're not allowing Derek Carr to look for a potential trade partner... That's interesting there, but you have him, you have Jimmy G, and then you have Aaron Rodgers. Those are the three main quarterbacks. You know, you still also have Ryan Tannehill, who I believe is is on. A, uh, he, I believe this past year he was on the last year of his contract. I mean, Ryan Tannehill is an average to below average quarterback. Uh, I think Derek Carr, uh, Jimmy G, and Aaron Rodgers are obviously above Ryan Tannehill. You could argue Jimmy G, uh, but I, I've I've argued Jimmy G constantly, and we're actually going to be talking about Jimmy G later on in the show, but I just find it uh, very, very interesting uh, what what the Packers do because the report is they actually prefer to move off Aaron Rodgers. So I think they're finally using their brains here and thinking like, you know what? He, he costs too much money. We got to figure out what to do with him here. So it, it's going to be interesting what they do moving forward. Uh, but if, if I had to say, once again, Aaron Rodgers' best situation besides, I mean, besides retirement, I mean, he's still owed, you know, exorbitant amount of money. Uh, I would say stick with the 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 Packers because I I, meant, I forgot to mention uh, in 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 the last topic where we talked about Aaron Rodgers, which was I said Jimmy G was a great fit. 
I, I mean, I think Derek Carr is a very, very, you know, comparable pick as well. You also, but the Jets also realize you have a lot of people that are, you know, coming up to free agency. You have Mike White, you have Quincy Williams, uh, you have a couple other offensive linemen uh, that you need to that you need to sort out. Your kicker on the Greg Zerline, I don't need to worry about him. Uh, you know, you have, you have uh, James Robinson. You brought him in after Brees Hall got hurt. So you have a couple of players, a couple of notable players, Lamarcus Joyner and Quan Alexander on defense that were were pretty good for you. It's just a matter of if you want to bring them back. They're not; they don't cost you know a tremendous amount of money. But you also have a few other uh, players that you may need to resign or get rid of, and then hold the dead cap penalty. Uh, but the Jets do have; I, I believe they're actually negative in cap space. Uh, at the start of this this offseason. So it's going to be interesting how they move pieces around. Uh, like Carl Lawson. Uh, they might need to get rid of him. Corey Davis. Jordan Whitehead. CJ Mosley. Uh, he has a, almost a $15 million dead cap penalty. Which that's that's going to be something. Braxton Barrios who was fighting for a contract this past offseason. Uh, they, they're going to need to decide to do with him. And, and oh yeah. The quarterback Zach Wilson. Uh, who has been an absolute disgrace for them. Uh, you know, this past season, they benched him twice. Uh, and then, you know, Salah said, oh, we're not going to give up on Zach Wilson. This is not the last time you've seen him. Uh, that's just, I, I don't believe that Robert Salah actually believes in that because he goes on to say uh, that they're going to be actively searching for a veteran quarterback. Uh, and in that case, you wouldn't say that Zach Wilson, this is this the not the last we've seen of Zach Wilson. So I think Zach Wilson should be gone. But then you have, you know, you might want to bring Mike White back in, who's a very, very good uh, backup, but we saw, you know, when he was starting, you know, he, he goes out and wins one or two games, but in those other games he plays, he does not look great. Uh, so we're going to need to see what happens there. Uh, but we're going to take a 30 second break, but we have a big show plan. We talk about the associate, we start with the association Celtics and Lakers and what horrible, horrible, uh, officiating was happening, uh, over this past weekend, but we will be back in just 30 seconds. 